Jesus. And you and I need to know that. And incidentally, you know, just before we eat the bread, incidentally, messiahship and bread have a close association. Did you know that? Messiahship and bread have a very close association. And the devil knows that. When Jesus was baptized, he was tested by the devil. And you know one of the temptations? In fact, the very first temptation was about bread. Yeah? Yeah? And what was, what was the devil saying to Jesus? If you are the son of God, hello, that if was not a subjunctive if. It was in the indicative mood and best interpreted since. Since you are the son of God, which was actually saying since you are the Messiah, then make bread for the people. Because one of the messianic expectation was that the Messiah would provide bread for them. Hello? That was one of the messianic expectation of the Jews. That the Messiah would provide bread for them so that they will no longer be hungry. For one of the challenges of the Jewish nation was hunger. Hunger. As a result of their captivity, they were not able to plant and reap as before. For although they would plant, many times their crop would be reaped by soldiers and other marauding nations. And they would be left with just the bare essentials. They were hungry. But one of their expectations is the Messiah would come and deliver them. And in their delivery, they would have galore bread. So Satan was saying, prove that you are the Messiah. Give them bread to eat. And Jesus resisted that temptation. But later on, he said, I am, I am the bread. Eat me and you know of Jesus' ability to provide bread, don't you? For he's provided bread for 5,000 men plus women and children at one stage and 4,000 men plus women and children at another time. And you know Therefore, that Jesus has the ability to provide real bread that you can use to satisfy your real hunger. But you will still die after you eat that real bread. And that is not the essence of eating Jesus. It's not about never ever dying, but it means never ever being subject to the final death. For though the believer in Jesus Christ will die, the death he dies is not final. For he will come from the grave to inherit eternal life. And so today, as we prepare to have the communion one more time, I want you to be aware of the fact that People are now questioning whether or not what the church has been teaching is true. Some are shaken. Some are fearful. Some are frightened. Some are nervous. Some are doubtful. Am I in the true church? Or has the truth led us, has the true church led us astray? The church may one day have to change some of its teachings. But one thing you need to be aware of. It is not the church that is the way. It is Jesus. 
Hello? It is not the church that is the life. It is Jesus. And whether or not the church goes by the right name, one thing is sure. If you have a connection with Jesus Christ, you will never go the wrong way. For Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. The church may have the wrong understanding, but Jesus is always right. And I ask you today to do yourself one big eternal favor. When you take the bread today, take the bread as if you are taking Jesus. Eat Jesus today by faith. Hello? Hello? What did I say? Eat Jesus today by faith. Become a strong, firm, unmovable believer in Jesus Christ. For if you are anchored in Jesus, no matter how battered the church will be, you have every assurance of eternal life. For God so gave the world his son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I reaffirm my faith in Jesus. My faith has found a resting place. Not in a man-made creed, but I trust the ever-living one that he for me will be. He is the bread of life. Eat of him today. Drink of him today. And you shall not be moved. Times you have to speak victory during the test and no matter how you feel speak the word